Hey YouTube, I'm back with another little video. I want to be honest with you guys today um, and express my heart out in a certain area and I know that it's going to be encouraging. I know that it's going to, yeah, just be something very uplifting for you to hear if you need to hear this and very real. So, um, something that has been on my mind and actually the Holy Spirit convicted me of this about two days ago, a day ago or two days ago. And I love sharing with you guys, um, how the Lord moves and works in my life, how the Holy Spirit moves and works. He's not always just like, you're doing great, you're doing awesome, but he is convicting and he is correcting in love, but correcting nonetheless. And I love that just having a relationship with the Holy Spirit that he can come to me and correct me and he knows I'm going to be corrected if I need to be corrected in his presence and the minute he's like hey something's weird I'm like oh I'm sorry god I didn't see that like I just I really didn't see it and it's such a beautiful moment so I want to show Jesus's heart and conviction and um just really have an honest conversation about this so um my life is just, it's a different one. I know people say that sometimes like, oh, my story has been crazy or my life's been crazy. But partially why I don't share my testimony quite yet, like my full testimony is because I'm still living it and going back and understanding like why God or what was this or okay, Kate or like, Lord, how do I even dissect what happened here? Like, what's going, you know, so I'm still really processing, I would say, my childhood and my young adult life. And I'm looking forward to um, the time when the Holy Spirit's like, yeah, let's share this. Because I don't even think I could share it in a video and do it justice. Like, I've got to take time and sit there and write stuff down, if you know what I mean. So, anyway, I, my life has been just strange so strange uh, but yet really good like I had a really good upbringing for the the most part like I, I I was allowed to be a child I was like most people aren't allowed to be a child due to things that take away their innocence or their childhood I was allowed to be a kid I really was and I don't take that for granted but <laughs> you know the Lord and what Jesus has called me to and what he's asking me to do part of that is hear from his heart part of that is hear from his heart get letters from him to mainly encourage you guys and to encourage me, but also to give me direction and preparation so that I'm prepared, but also that you guys are prepared for the days ahead so that you know that your heavenly father sees the things that are hidden and that you can develop a deeper trust in him as things unfold, but it takes time. And so in my life, uh, that's the one area that people are like hey love you you're super funny I've got a good like personality I love to care for people and then the minute the Holy Spirit says I want to talk to them about something and I want to bring that conviction I want to bring that like this is my heart which it gets like no God doesn't speak like that he won't give you a letter he doesn't do that he's not going to do that you know that's only deception that's that's you know whoop and then it's rejection because they're like, absolutely not. You're out there, you know, <laughs> just that, that weird, um, it's kind of strange. Like, it's kind of strange to the world. Like, what are you saying? Like anything that has been, oh, the Holy Spirit wants me to say, or God's telling me, or an angel said to me some weird spiritual thing. Like it's, it's been deception for a lot of people. It's actually been disgusting. It's been misused. And I just want to add in this, if you think an angel's talking to you, just be so careful with that. I've never had an angel talk to me. I don't even, I, I just never have had an angel talk to me because I have the Holy Spirit. Like, I don't need to talk to an angel. And an angel has not had to come and talk to me. I'm not saying God can send an angel, you know. I'm not saying there aren't, like, guardian angels. And I'm not, there definitely are angels. But I've never had an angel need to talk to me before, uh, you know. So be very careful with that when people like an angel told me because oftentimes if an angel told them it's a fallen angel it's a deceptive spirit and it's false okay that's how we get even like mormonism how we get um honestly even islam and stuff like that like angels came and said you know and other religions out there that are just so steeped in deception um but anyway so as the holy spirit has literally given me this gift to hear from him just i i 
you know, didn't ask for it. It's not like I was like, God, I want to hear from your heart. I just wanted to follow Jesus and I want to honor him, right? So in saying that, I have diminished the gift that Jesus has chosen to give me because others have diminished it around me and that has taught me, oh, maybe it's just too weird. Maybe maybe I'm just out here like I'm I'm like this isn't okay or like I'm you know and because of the external diminishing around me of the gifts and, and the gift this main gift that the Lord has chosen to give to me I myself have um diminished the gifting that the Holy Spirit has given me and that was something the Holy Spirit convicted me of he was like Ezra Lee He's like, you can't control other people. You can't, they're going to make their own decisions. Like, leave them with me. But he's like, for you, don't diminish the gift that I gave to you. Don't diminish it. And I want to speak to you. And this is something I, you know, the Holy Spirit just um, distributes the gifts. Like, he chooses what we need. And, and Jesus knows what we need for what we're called to, what he's asking us to do. And it's, it's, the Holy Spirit showed me that my heart was subtly, so subtly, so subconsciously not aware of it. Like every time the Holy Spirit would speak to me, I'm like, I'm like, Lord, like this is weird. Or, you know, like I have this in the back of my mind, like, God, like people don't want to hear it. Or like, you know, they're, you know, why would I, why am I even hearing from you? You know, just this struggle and this wrestle and this like, you know, and so the Holy Spirit has been highlighting that to me the past day or two. He's like, Ezra Lee, I've given you a gift and I want you to walk in this, but it takes extra time to develop this in your character, in your maturity, in your discerning for sure my voice over anything else that would try to deceive you, your flesh or the enemy. He's like, it takes time to develop this gifting, to grow our relationship, mine and Jesus's. Like it's taken time to build this, you know, time, you know, through pain, through good times, through just like blah times, you know, it's taken time to develop this gifting. I, the Lord gave this gifting to me, but it's taken me time and I'm still developing the gifting that Jesus has placed, you know, over my life and what and the calling he's put over my life that um, is, is a little out there sometimes for people and a little out there for this world. And it's so beautiful though. It's so beautiful. And I, and I, I even just, it's hard for me to say this publicly, but the Holy Spirit wanted me to say this publicly because it's, it, as I speak this out, as I'm obedient to speak this out, it starts to heal my heart. It starts to give me that bold confidence in, you know, what Jesus has spoken to me and what he's given to me. And as I went before the Lord privately, as he's convicting my heart and, you know, I'm, I'm meeting with him privately. He often gets me to speak things out publicly after I meet with him privately. And, um, it's been hard though. I'm not going to lie. Like I have felt so insecure at times, like Jesus, like why me? Cause people will tell me they're like, well, I don't hear stuff from the Lord like that. So why do you get to hear stuff from the Lord like that? Right. And there's this like a little bit of jealousy that starts arising. Like what makes you so important and special? Like, what are you even saying? And I'm like, I, I like, you know, trip to like false humility. Cause I'm like, it's not like, I just, I'm just sitting over here by my own business. And the Holy Spirit came to me when I was a teenager. Like I didn't even, I didn't know what was, what was up or what was down in that area of hearing from the Holy Spirit. I was saved, but I didn't know that that was, I don't know, you know? And so I... I don't like that. That's so hard. That's so challenging to walk through. And so that's really, um, yeah, it's just been like heavy. And so I don't know, the Lord wanted me to speak this out. And I was like, God, like, this seems weird. Like, this is like a personal thing between me and Jesus. But I feel like it is so important to share these things, at least um, on my page right now to help you guys understand just the real aspects of walking with the Lord through something like this. And um, you can hear my heart, you can hear, you know, what the Lord is sharing with me and and it's important because um a lot of people who proclaim to hear from Jesus just aren't a lot of people who proclaim to hear from Jesus it's literally their flesh it's literally like demonic you know deception and mainly it's their flesh honestly um and a lot of times with the Holy Spirit things are spoken and they take a while to happen 
very rarely and at certain points does like when God's like hey this is gonna happen and he speaks something and then it, it doesn't always happen in such a short time frame because then why would that be so cool that wouldn't be cool that's just like anyone could make that happen okay yay woohoo like false prophets the enemy he can make stuff happen pretty quickly but only God the great I am Jesus only can say hey that's gonna happen and then it takes a few years and then it actually happens and then it's like outside of that generation for some things that the holy spirit has spoken and, and god has spoken through people but like it takes time and before the end of the age everything that the great i am speaks through his people that the holy spirit puts on the heart of his people will happen will come to pass will be what he says it's going to be because he's outside of time so he knows what decisions are made he knows what's going to happen and he can therefore help lead and guide his people and so i want to encourage you that if you've been abused if you've been um you know just deceived by any of the doctrines surrounding oh the holy spirit said you know um i pray that there's a healing that comes on your heart from this video because trust me with some of the stuff i've been through Oh boy, there were seasons of my life where I was like, I don't want to hear from you, Lord. I'm too scared to get it wrong. I'm too scared that like, this is like, people are saying, um, I, I feel the rejection of people of the gifting over my life. And so maybe it's just, and I would just work against myself, honestly, because I was like, I don't know, like, uh, you know, God. So I didn't want to hear from him. And that's one of my main giftings. And that's, that's what the enemy wants to do is squish our giftings squish us and say no like you, you shouldn't do this no like you wouldn't be good at this no God's not doing this so that we don't move in the area that the Holy Spirit wants to um, move in our lives to bring the heart of God to bring the the greater knowledge of who Jesus is what the Bible says Jesus is to this hurting earth that literally Satan has distorted and demented the character and the heart of Jesus and that's what Jesus wants to correct and show people who he truly is by communicating his heart by communicating his heart you can intellectually know everything you need to know about scripture but miss the heart of Jesus miss the heart of God and not have the Holy Spirit truly bringing out the truth of the heart of God through scripture and what he is saying and so I um yeah, I, I really want, I pray that this is like a healing video for you. Um, if you've had any hurts, any wounds within this area, because trust me, like, oh man, in this time of doing this more publicly, because for a while I would just like, if I was at a church service and the Holy Spirit's like, I have a letter for somebody, I would just write it down. Or he's telling me something, I just write it down and it'd be in my journals. Like I just, no one would really know unless I needed to give it to a person or share it with somebody. And uh, so sharing it publicly <laughs> has been um, very interesting, to say the least. And I would have people that would constantly, you know, come into my DMs and be like, hey, I'll give you money if you can, you know, share with me the word that God's saying. And I would be like, no, like, you're not giving me money. Like, A, I probably don't have anything for you because if you're coming to me with that desperation, that's an issue like that's straight up an issue I'm not taking your money I'm not giving you anything because the Lord's not giving me anything for you but go back to the Lord and ask Jesus himself to reveal his heart to you you don't need me you need Jesus and but so many people are like trained by these false ministries by these false leaders who are like oh yeah thus says the Lord yeah give me fifty dollars and thus says the Lord like that's repulsive that's disgusting. Like nothing, there's few things that make me very frustrated and that is one of them. I get so, I'm like, what? What? You don't charge for the heart of the Lord. And if you're charging, then you're not communicating the heart of Jesus. You might be communicating the heart of a God, something demonic, something, you know, your flesh, but no, not Jesus. Oh, it's so... It is, it is interesting, the things that I've seen. <laughs> like I said, I it won't fit into a video. I, I mean, maybe, but it's I've been reflecting on a couple more things that I forgot about today, about my story, and I'm like, Lord, what? <laughs> what in God's green earth have you put me through? Like, I just, this is crazy. And I love, one of the cool things about my story, I feel like, is, like, 
90% of what I've been through is things that God has put me through. There's been a few things where I've been my own, like, disobedience or choices or sins or things like that. But 90% of it is, like, the Lord's like, hey, I want you to go over here. So I do. And then that brings about some crazy things. And then, like, go over here. And then I do. And that brings about crazy things. And it's just he's led me through these things to learn and to see things and, um experience all the extremes to then find the balance of the Holy Spirit um, in the Bible and truly what Jesus <laughs> means on many different topics. Anyway, so Jesus is so, so good, but this is a real area of my life that the Lord um, highlighted and honestly convicted me of. He's like, you've diminished the gift I've given to you and that's a no-go, <laughs> like no more. You can't diminish it. You need to walk in confidence, boldness, and in enjoyment of what I've given to you. Because the fact that the Holy Spirit, like the great I am, he chooses to talk to me and speak to me. And he's just given me this gift. That's a, that's a, that's a treasure. And if I diminish that gift, then that's really sad. Then I'm encouraging other people to diminish the many gifts that, you know, the Holy Spirit wants to give to you that the Bible clearly talks about and, and so, yeah, um, don't diminish your giftings. If you don't know what you're gifted in or what Jesus, you know, that little thing that the Lord or big thing that the Lord, I think they're all big things um, that the Lord has given to you. Ask him, ask him, just, just really sit there, read the Bible and ask him to show you, God, what, what, what am I good at? Like, what do you want to really, um, what gifting, like, what can I do that just comes effortlessly? That's like a gift. That, that I didn't have to work hard at, but it's literally just inside of me to do. What is that? Don't overthink it, but ask the Holy Spirit to show you. I pray, Jesus, you would reveal to people their gifting, that they would stay in their lane and be so joyful and joyous at what you are doing in their life so that they don't look at other people's lanes and say, oh, I want that. Why can't I? Know that they are so joyful for who you've made them, who you've designed them to be, who you've crafted them to be. You don't want them to be like me, to be like anybody else. You want them to be like themselves, who you have called them to be. And we get so caught up in callings and, oh, what's my calling? It's just so superficial at times. Don't overthink it. What are you good at? Jesus, what have you gifted them? I pray that you would just show them as they read. I think it's uh, 1 Corinthians 12, I believe. Um, you know, some of the gifts that you, the gifts of the Spirit, you know, that you want to give us, Holy Spirit. And so I pray, Lord, that you would reveal some of the giftings and abilities and talents and, and um, areas of people's lives that, they're really good at but they've been diminishing either because other people have put them down or they've put themselves down or the enemy has tried to steal their confidence away but i pray jesus for healing in people's confidence in who you've called them to be and their identity in you and their identity is not their giftings or what they're good at or what they're not good at their identity if they're born again is that they are a child of you Jesus and their main life's goal is to get to know more of you and then to show the world who you are through their giftings it's not about them it's not about oh look at me it's about you and what you're doing Jesus and I worship you for that thank you Jesus in Jesus name amen so don't diminish your giftings like I was doing. And, you know, this can happen so subconsciously because I'm still operating in my giftings for the most part. And still, you know, if the Lord wants to tell me something, I'm excited. But I did recognize as the Holy Spirit convicted me, there's like a twinge a little bit in my heart of like insecurity whenever the Holy Spirit is giving me like a letter or speaking to me or I see the letters that I have on my wall. There's just this like like ugh, god like i just i'm diminishing it like it's not that big of a deal when it is a big deal and especially if the holy spirit does speak to you um you know just because i can relate with this um it's a big deal <laughs> it's a big deal and it would be just like the enemy to want to diminish something so beautiful it's been dis distorted and tainted and manipulated and just trashed that whole gifting of just 
hearing the father's heart on a topic for somebody or or to prepare it's been so abused and used and of course the enemy would do that just run that through the sand because if people the direction that the holy spirit has given to me has saved me from so much like so much heartache i've still definitely made mistakes and i've had heartache and i've had definitely painful moments even following the holy spirit but i'm telling you the wisdom that he brings has saved me or the wisdom that he brought has saved me from so much like just gunk of this world and so why wouldn't like just because you're not on here maybe sharing god's heart publicly speaking god's heart you know sharing that way um the holy spirit wants to talk to you it might not be in letters like he talks to me maybe it is but maybe it's in pictures maybe you just want there's a scripture verse that he just pulls out and it, it means something just so beautiful to you as you look at the history as you look at the context you're like wow this is the direction i needed or you know this prompting to do this or not do this because it's not just dishon- it's like dishonoring to the lord or it's not wise the holy spirit wants to speak to you today i'm like just no matter your past, no matter what you, you know, you know, all your theology about it and all the wrong stuff you've seen, point blank, the truth is the Holy Spirit wants to speak to his people. He's our guide, not like the weird spirit guides. If you're following a spirit guide, you're following a demon. You are. That's just, it's just, I'm not going to even sugarcoat that. But the Holy Spirit, he is our guide through scripture and through this life. He's helping us. He's our helper And he wants to lead us and guide us and help us, okay? So don't diminish your giftings and also don't diminish the fact that the Holy Spirit does want to speak to you today and lead and guide your life. The best place to start is get into the Bible. I grew up with the Bible. I was always around the Bible. The Bible was read to me when I was going to bed a lot of times. I had it every single week at church sometimes multiple times during the week like I was memorizing scripture in elementary school like I had the bible around me all the time and that allowed me that when the holy spirit wanted to speak to me in um 2015 for the first time I recognized that this was the holy spirit I I knew I couldn't even articulate that but he bared witness to my spirit because I had been in the bible because I knew I'm like no this is this is God like this is I, I don't quite understand this and I'm kind of resistant because like what you know but like this is God and it blows me away but the Bible is a great place like you need to be in the word be in the Bible I'm telling you and ask the Holy Spirit every time you open the Bible say Holy Spirit bring out the truth in this passage of your heart what the mind of God on this passage show me and then study it and study it, and learn, and grow, and um, yeah, Jesus, he has so much to show you that's not just intellectual. Sometimes it is. I'm not poo-pooing. Yeah, I said poo-poo. I'm not poo-pooing intellectual knowledge, but you need, it can be intellectual sometimes, but it also has to make a connection to your heart to have a change, okay? It has to be both. You can't just be like, only my heart. Oh, I love God, my emotions, but your mind doesn't change. No, you need both. You need to like have this convergence so to speak I think that's the right word of them both coming together to make that true change right and that's the Holy Spirit can move and work in our logic and our emotions to bring about that lasting change so anyways I'm gonna be on my journey now of don't diminish your gifts as really don't don't you know just because others have or because my own insecurities have overwhelmed me at times or the enemy has come to try to steal you know my confidence it's a gift that Jesus has given to me so I need to, I need to walk in that boldly, confidently, and joyously, not like, oh, well, no, I didn't choose to have this because it wasn't me. Just be like, yeah, that's what I have. It's a gift from God. I'm so excited about it. Like, this is how Jesus has used, how I've partnered with Jesus in this over the past few years. And it's so exciting to see how the Holy Spirit works in me. And just, oh, I'm so excited to see how this conviction that the Holy Spirit put on my heart like a day or so ago changes how I go moving forward um because I can feel the little head heart change that happened and you know the Lord healing my heart in this area so praise Jesus like oh he's so faithful and he's so good and I'm so appreciative of his processes of his heart just who he is he's so good so thank you so much for listening I think that's all I have right now um bless you guys in all the ways and I'll be back whenever I'm back